In this lecture, we are going to create our very first API using Express.js and we are going to create this API by following the REST architecture. So let's go to VS Code and from here, I will remove these two routes which we created in our previous lectures and now let's go ahead and let's create an API. Now what I want is, I want to create an API and the endpoint for that API should be API slash movies. Okay. And this API should handle a get request. So the HTTP method here should be get. So for that, let's go ahead and on this app variable. So basically this app variable is storing an object and that object has been returned by calling this express method. So whenever we call this express method, it is going to return an object and that object has been assigned to this app variable. So on that app variable, on that object, we have a method called get. And this method is used to make a get request. Now, the first argument of this get method should be the URL, the endpoint to which we want to make the request. So here, the endpoint will be slash API slash movies. Now here, we can also simply write slash movies. But since we are creating an API, it's a good practice to specify that in the endpoint itself. Now here, if you want, you can also specify the version of the API. So for example, let's say if you are creating this API for the first time, you will call it version one. And later, when you're going to make some changes to that API, instead of modifying the same API, you can create a new API with the endpoint where the version will be V2. The advantage of doing that is that, let's say this V1 version of this API is used by some existing customers. Now, if you go ahead and modify the V1 version itself, it might break the existing customer's application. But instead of modifying the V1 version, if you go ahead and create a new V2 version, then there will be two versions of the same API, the V1 version and the V2 version. The V2 version is the modified one. So the existing customers who are already using the V1 version, their application will also not break. And the new customers who wants to use your API, they can simply go ahead and use the newer version. That is the version V2. Okay. But again, specifying this version is also optional. After that, to this get method, we also need to pass a second argument. And the second argument is a callback function. And this callback function is called as route handler because it is this callback function which is going to be executed whenever a new request will come to this endpoint, to this URL. And this callback function is going to receive two arguments, the request object and the response object. So again, whenever a get request will be made on this URL, on this endpoint, this callback function will be executed. Now, what do we want to do whenever a client makes a GET request on this endpoint? Well, whenever a client makes a GET request to this endpoint, what we want to do is we want to send a list of movies in the response. Now, from where we are going to get that list of movies? So in real world applications, we use databases for that. We use databases for storing the data. But here, I want to keep things simple. Here, I simply want to show you how we can create RESTful APIs using Express.js. Okay, so instead of using a database as a data source, what we are going to do is, we are going to create a JSON file and we will use that JSON file as our data source. So inside this project folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I will call it data. And inside that data folder, I'm going to create a new file and I will call this file movies.com json okay inside this movies.json file let's have an array and inside that array we are going to create a list of movie object so let's just go ahead and create the first movie object here i want to have an id property let's say the id is one then i want to have a name property let's say name of the movie is die hard then i also want to have release year property and let's say this movie was released in 1998 Finally, let's also have a duration property and let's say duration is 90 minutes. Okay, so this is our first movie object. In this way, let's go ahead and let's create two more movie objects. So I will copy this object and I will paste it two times. And there I will change the ID of the movie to two. Let's say movie name is expandable. Let's say release year is 2008 and duration is 80 minutes. In the same way, here, let's change the ID of the movie to three. Let's say movie name is Interstellar. And this movie was released in 2014. 
and duration is 120 minutes okay so for the simplicity for now let's only keep three movie objects here so what we want is whenever a get request is made on this url we want to return this json data in the response okay so here from within this method i want to return some json data so for that on this response object we can use this json method because we want to return json data in the response and what do we want to return we want to return this json data in the response to do that first from this app.js file we need to read this movies.json file and to do that first of all we need to require the fs module so here i will go ahead and i will create a variable i will call it fs and then we can use this require function and there we can specify the package which we want to require here we want to require this fs package okay then what we want is using this fs package i want to read this movies.json file so here i'm going to use this read file sync method because i want to read this movies.json file synchronously and i want to read it only once if i go ahead and if i try to read this movies.json file inside this callback function in that case what will happen is every time a new get request is made on this url this file will be read and i don't want that i only want to read this movies.json file once and i want to store that data in a variable okay so here let's specify the path of the file so it is in the current directory in the data folder and in there we have this movies.json file so when this read file sync method will read the data read the content from this file it is going to return that content let's go ahead and let's store that content in a variable and let's call it movies now inside this movies variable i don't want to store the json data which we have inside this movies.json file instead what i want is i want to convert this json data into a javascript object and then i want to store that javascript object inside this movies variable and we already know how to do that for that we can go ahead and we can use json dot pass method so this json dot pass will convert the json data into a javascript object and it will return that object so we are storing that object inside this movies variable and now we want to return the data which we have inside this movies variable in the response so using this json method we can return the data which we have inside this movies variable in the response now before sending the response let's also go ahead and let's set the status code so here I want to set the status code to 200 that means okay and in the last lecture we learned that whenever we send the json data in the response before sending the json data we first format it and one of the formatting which we talked about in the last lecture is json json formatting so here before sending this data which we have inside this movies variable into the response first we want to format it and here we want to use the json json formatting so for the json json formatting what we do is we create an object inside that object first we specify the status property now the value of this status property can be success fail or error here i am going to set this status property to success then we can have the data property and here to this data property we assign another object so here we are basically doing the enveloping in the last lecture we learned about enveloping here what we are doing is we are wrapping this data which we want to send in the response inside another object and that is called as enveloping so inside this object which we are assigning to this data property there i am going to create a new property called movies and to that movies i am going to assign this movies variable so here we have formatted this data which we wanted to send in the response by using json json formatting okay with this let's save the changes and let's go ahead and let's run this app.js file so for that let's say node space app.js okay so the server has started let's go to the browser there let's type the url so the url will be the root url which is 127.0.0.1 colon 3000 so this is the root url and then we can specify the endpoint so the endpoint here is api slash v1 slash movies okay let's press enter and here you will notice that we are receiving some json data in the response okay so the api which we have created here it is working as expected it is returning us some json data and if we 
have a look at that data, you will see that it has this status property. So basically this status property, which we are specifying here, and then it has the data property. So here it has the data property and to that data property, we are assigning an object where we have a property called movies and that movies is assigned with the array. So this array is basically this array, which we have inside this movies.json file. Now using the browser, it's not very feasible to test a API. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the tool to test our API and the name of the tool is postman. So you can go to this link, this postman.com slash downloads. And from there you can download this postman tool. So throughout this course, I'm going to use this postman tool for testing our API. Now here I have this postman tool open. So here I am on the home screen. Now, if I want to test an API, what I can do is I can click on this create new and then I can go to this HTTP request. Now from here, I can select an HTTP request like get post put patch delete, etc. And here I can type the endpoint, the URL to which I want to make a request. So here we have created an API, which can be handled using get request. And the endpoint for that API is this. So if I go to this postman tool there, I have selected this get method and here I can type the URL. So again, the URL will be the root URL, which is 127.0.0.1. Then the port number here, we are using this port number 3000 slash, and then we can specify the endpoint. So the endpoint is API slash V1 slash movies. Okay. And when I click this send button, what will happen is a get request will be sent to this URL. And if this URL is returning some response, we can see that response here in this section. So if I click on this send button, you will notice that here we have received some response and in the response data, we have a JSON object in that JSON object. We have the status property, this data property, and to that data property, we are assigning an object. So this object is basically our envelope in that envelope. We have this movies property. And to that movies property, an array has been assigned and this array contains some movie objects. Here we have three movie objects. Now in this pretty tab, we are seeing this response in a formatted way. But if I go to this raw tab, we are seeing the same JSON response, but it is not formatted. Then here we also have this preview tab in the preview tab. We can see the preview of the result. Now, if you also want to see the response headers, you can click here and here you will see all the headers which has been set for the response. And one of the headers which you will see here is this content type and it is set to application slash JSON. So if you remember in the very first lecture of Express.js, I told you that whenever we use this JSON method to send a response by default, the content type of that response is set to application slash JSON. If we use send method to send the response in that case, content type is set to text slash HTML. But if we use JSON, it will be application slash JSON. That's why here the content type is set to application slash JSON. You can also see the request headers. So here, everything which you see, it is related to the response, but here you can see everything related to request. So if I click on this header here, you can see the request headers. Okay. Now here we have this body section. In the same way, we have this body section for the response. So currently we have made a get request. So in the response, we will receive some body. We will receive some JSON data. We can see that body here. Okay. Inside this body section. So if I go to this pretty tab here, we can see the response body, which we have received. But let's say you are sending a request and with that request, you also want to send some data. So you can specify that data in this body section. So this body is for the request. And this body is for the response. Okay. So this was a quick overview of this postman tool. Now here, let's say I want to save this request. So this request is get request and this is the endpoint. So I want to save this request for that. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to create a new collection. I will call this collection. Maybe let's say my collection. Okay. So if I click somewhere outside, you will see that that collection has been created. Now what I want is. I want to save this request inside this my collection for that. I can click on this save button 
here I can select the collection. So in this collection, I want to save my request and I can provide a name for this request. So basically here we are making a get request to get all the movies. So here I will simply call it get all movies. Okay, and let's click on this save button. So this request has been saved here inside this my collection. All right. Now, if you notice in the response here, when we are making a get request to this endpoint, in the response, we are receiving a list of movies. So what I want is along with this status and data property, I also want to have a count property. And in that count property, I want to display the number of movies which we have in this list. So let me go back to Visual Studio and there let me also set one more property and I will call this property count. And to get the total number of movies which we have inside this movies array, on this movies array, we can use the length property. So here I will say movies dot length. All right, let's save the changes. Let me stop the server by pressing control C and let's restart the server again. If I save the changes now and let's go back to the postman again and let's make a new request to the same URL and we want to make a get request. So when I click on this send button here, we have received the response and in the response we have this count property which is set to three. So this property basically tells that in this movies list inside this movies array, we have three movie objects. All right. Now the count property which we are setting here, we don't need to do it for all types of requests. Here we are setting this count property because we know that in the response, we are going to receive a list of movies. So that's why we want to know the total number of movies which we have received in the response. But when we are making a request to get only one movie data, in that case, this count property is not required because in that case, we already know that there will be only one movie data, right? So that's why we don't need to set this count property for all types of requests. All right. So this is all from this lecture. In this lecture, we created a very simple API which can handle a get request on this endpoint. So whenever a user makes a get request to this endpoint in the response, he's going to receive a list of movies. Now we are getting this list of movies from this movies.json file. In the real world application, we might be using a database, but here, since I want to keep things simple, we have used this JSON file. We have not used a database. So throughout this section, this movies.json file is going to be our data source. So we are going to read data from this movies.json file. We are going to add data to this movies.json file. We are going to update and delete data from this movies.json file. So basically we are going to create APIs for the CRUD operation and we are going to perform that CRUD operation on this movies.json file. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.